Hi, Maxine. You want to share with our audience um, a little bit about your background and experiences and what we're here? Thank you, Shelley. This is a great opportunity for us to come together and, and talk about what we do as we help, uh, you know, we help um, others in their business and in their, even in their personal work. Um, I am Maxine Barnett. I am an executive and career coach, and I help leaders. And when I say leaders, leaders at any level from the C-suite to the team leader, to the business owner, the entrepreneur, they are all leaders. And I help leaders navigate the workspace uh, with maximizing and amplifying their soft skills. Awesome. So we love that. So there was an article recently that came out by the Society of Human Resource Management, and they spoke about um, the fact that, which I found very interesting, and that's why we're chatting today. Mm -hmm. One in three workers say their manager can't lead a, lead a team. One in three workers say their manager can't lead a team. And I think this is straight up your alley as an executive coach and working with um, um, employees and managers at that level to share with us um, what, from your perspective, um, is, is, is how can they handle it? Uh, from the manager's expense, um, perspective or employee's perspective, whatever perspective you can come from, share how someone can. And, and that, 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 that uh, statistic is unfortunate. And right. it's, unfo it's unfortunate, but it may also be true. It is uh, true. It is true. <laughs> it is because, true. Because let's start with the, the reality is, is that many leaders literally um, are, are, are actually thrown into leadership or they yes. wind up in leadership. You know, yes, exactly. They wind up in leadership without any preparation for the role. Yes. So I am a, a, a part of a team. I am, I am counting widgets, whatever it is. I am stuffing envelopes. I am um, yes. putting out reports. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, I may be there longest. Yes. I, I may know the job a little better than others. Yes. And I am pulled out from among my peers and I'm expected to be a supervisor. Exactly. Anything about being supervising people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you do um, as a coach is to help to prepare them. Absolutely. And ideally, it will be it will be nice if the preparation can come before the of appointment. Course. <laughs> Ideally, but many times it doesn't. That's the reality right, of the right. workplace or, or the person who's wound up as a business owner by yes. giving up inheritance. So, yeah. or whatever, you know? <laughs> so yes, what I would do is, is work with that individual and sometimes yes. work with the team. So yes. sometimes it's working with the individual, sometimes it's working with the individual and the team yes. in terms of harnessing the soft skills that are required right, to lead. Perfect. Because remember, it's the technical skills that get us the job. Right, the technical right, skills, right. we know we can do the job. Right. But the technical or hard skills, not enough. Right, so, so like you, I do a little bit of that as well, um, not more than a little bit because many persons have secretly, managers have secretly come behind the scenes to say, hey, I've been thrust in this position. I'm happy for it, but I don't know how to do it. How do I handle my peers? How do I, uh, my, how do I handle being a peer and then now I'm their supervisor? How do you handle that? They come all the time. And can you just shed some light on how you would suggest that um, an individual like that? Exactly. And it seems like we live parallel lives because yeah. just what you said, so the, the manager or the leader that winds up in many instances, they would come to me privately, um, mm -hmm. not wanting the organization to know that they're seeking this kind of help because sometimes, um, you know, how we are, um, we, we can cause people to feel that they're not suitable or they're yeah. not, you know, they're not, right. you yeah. know, they, they, they're not suitable for the job. They don't have the skills. They can't do the job. The, the language that we use. Right, right. So that's why some people come privately to us right. for that help in terms of coaching them. Mm -hmm. um, when I do that, though, what I would do first is an assessment to, to, to recognize where the deficiency is, because right. the, the soft skills is a long list. You know, mm -hmm. soft skills, and soft, there's the big umbrella of communication where right. there are various skills under that umbrella of communication, verbal skills, nonverbal skills, uh, active listening. Um, how to work in a team, how to collaborate, empathy, mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. go on and on. So we assess where, because not everyone is deficient in everything. 
So and we assess where the person may be deficient and then we come up with an intervention that will help that person. Now, it, it can happen both ways. The individual can come to me directly, mm -hmm. sometimes quietly, right. or the organization can come to me and ask right. me to help. Which one, you, which one do you find more frequent? Hmm. I, oh, I have done both. Um, the, I, I have found that the individual coming to me is more frequent. Right, because I think the organizations yes. sometimes tend to think about it from a, a cost perspective. So Absolutely. they don't have the money, so they just throw the person mm. into the position. And, and they expect the person to do the job. Exactly. Yes, so yes. because it's an impression on the individual, they mm. reach out to get coaching help sure. because they want to know. And they want to they do it quietly mm. and secretly because... They want to lead. So you're there for, with them for maybe a few um, months it, or it so into vary. time. Sometimes it can vary for, from three to six months. Right. Um, if it is a very serious situation, sometimes it can go into a year, you know, because right. especially if somebody who is leading a very large group of persons. Right. Imagine right. you right. never led and right. all of a sudden you're leading 20 persons. Right. Right. 20 persons and of control is 20. So you <laughs> It's difficult. It's difficult. Right. So and you the have person comes comes quietly sometimes because they don't again they don't want to appear weak. Of course, you don't want to. Of appear course, weak. Mm -hmm. but I and... want to let the person know it is strength when you recognize right that, that I'm deficient. I need help. That's right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they do it quietly. So if there's someone who wants to connect with you, and it is just that they think they don't have um that you have a sometimes a quick fix. Some things you can simple do in a month or two month period. Um, and then of course, if they have, as they progressively go on, they can come back to you as situations arise, right? Sure, be and we call that spot coaching, where right. it, there, there is a situation. And mm -hmm. sometimes it is a situation that has arisen that causes exactly. the person to seek the help. So there's a situation and that situation brings them to me and we literally is focus on that and look at, uh, no, we don't make the decision as a coach, we don't make the decision for the coachee but we ask enough questions to help to broaden mm -hmm. the thinking, to transform the thinking and literally guide them into making the best decision or mm -hmm. to, to deal with that situation and, and in the process, acquiring the skill set, the mm -hmm. soft skill set to deal with the situation. So okay, so, so there was one time that I had, I had written an article on um, being micromanaged and I wanted to share a little bit about that article that I had written, um, because I think um, a lot of employees, uh, managers, whatever level they are, they tend to leave companies. They tend to leave managers, not the company necessarily. So That's companies have that. That, that misinterpretation that they're leaving the company, but it's not that. It's they've been with the company for a long time, and then little by little, then they realize that um, that they can't anymore Absolutely. because Absolutely. they have been transferred to someone else it is and it's never really a sudden decision to leave it is never it is a series of, of behaviors a series right. of interactions right. that may be on the negative side that cause the decision for the person to leave. right so i want to define micromanagement is a management style whereby a manager closes closely observes or controls the work of a subordinates or employees, right? And, and this is a situation that happens. So I'm gonna go into a few things that happen when a manager micromanages an employee. The employees, they make them feel like a nightmare. Coming to work is like a nightmare. So they wanna be there, they wanna show up. They, it shows that the manager has little confidence, little or no confidence in the employee. And mostly the work being done is um, talent, the, the talent, the thing is that mostly, the most times that people leave organization are the ones that are more talented. Absolutely. So you're left, with, <laughs> you're left with the ones who are not progressing or who don't want to progress simply because they only want is a paycheck to go home, Absolutely. right? So there you're left with that as managers. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to share six signs that um, a manager, micromanager, and one is they never are satisfied right? With the deliverables. They are never satisfied with the deliverables. Never please. Go... <laughs> kind of please. Never please. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number two is often they feel frustrated because it would have been done. It should have been done differently. That's what they always think. They're never satisfied. It should. Mm -hmm. If you do and you go all out, they come back and say something that 
hey, you should have done it the other way. The goalpost, the goalpost is always it's pushed moved. further, keep moving, right? Keep moving, yes. So dig deep into the details, and they take and make corrections. So everything is a correction. So if you do things a little bit different, it's not it's not accepted by that manager. So that's a sign that you're a micromanaging. Um, fourthly, you want to know where the team is and what they're doing. Every hour of the day, you want to know, especially now that we are into this um, remote, remote work, work yes. and all, mm -hmm. they tend to want to know, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And they ask for frequent upset, up, um, updates. And that's mm -hmm. um, number five. This article I wrote um, came out of and expanded a little bit on a Harvard Business Review article that was written um, some years ago or some time ago. And I decided um, I was going to write it. So I can send the link um, to a blog article that I'd written on that. And um, the, the final thing is number six. Guess what? The manager wants to be copied on everything. Mm. copied on all the emails that they will not My want goodness. to allow the the Person employee senior or Look. junior once yeah. you are exactly mm -hmm. they want to be the copied space to grow right the exactly space to grow yes. and then they're yes. correcting them and all of that so how can they manage it i'll go through a number of points as how can a manager who is micromanaging and you recognize the science that we just shared mm -hmm. how can they manage it and these are don't be afraid to fail. You mentioned it just now in your discussion that mm -hmm. failure is something that um, it's not that you're going to go after failure, but if if you're trying something new, you will fail. And, and Hear if about you, I, if Einstein. You want, if you want an innovative and creative environment, you have to allow persons to fail. That's how the new ideas come up. Exactly. Yes. Um, I like mm -hmm. to use the example of the post-it. And it's an innovation, oh. right? It oh, was something that they my. threw aside each time. They threw it aside. And then in the end, yep. um, the secretary saw it and decided, hey, let me just use these. What happened today? Yes. We can't do without the... the, the. <laughs> just yesterday, I was discussing that with someone because I am a believer. If you see my workspace, it's a good thing you can't see it right now. I am a believer. I am looking at all the posters around me and I always wonder, what did we do before post-its? Exactly. I always wonder about that. What did we do? Yeah. So we talk about, um, don't be afraid to fail. Then the second point is focus on the what, not the how. So let everyone in, in your department know where what are the goals and then gain their commitment to achieve it. And I've been in company where um, I am a firm believer in sharing the goals, because if you don't share the goals, then they don't know where they're going. So if you think of a team yeah. like um, the team that now we're having the Olympics that are coming up. Preparing so if Japan. everybody is not preparing themselves on a whole, they know where they want to go and they want to capture the medals. Everybody know that's a big our overarching goal. But what do they do individually? They have their own goals and they break it down, whether it is getting up early in the morning, every day exercising, doing what they need to do mm -hmm. every single day or periodically, exactly, never giving yes. up on what they're supposed mm -hmm. to. And then you get to the big goal and guess what? We're all happy for them at the end of the day because the big overarching goal has been achieved. Now, the, the third and final point is let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let the people do Absolutely. what they want to do. Absolutely. Let them do what they want to do. Share allow your- Allow them space to grow. Right. Just allow them space, yes. Share mm -hmm. them. Share with them the, um, the to-do list. And if there's some things that you can do, that somebody in a department can do, give it to them, let them do it. Again, if they don't, if they mess it up, it's okay. You call them in and you talk to them, say, hey, I would have maybe tried it this way. Or how, what were you thinking when you tried that way? And chances are when they explain to you what they were doing, chances are you might very well, that manager might very well, okay. And then push it further so they can both together improve it. But that's okay. how you make somebody feel. I think um, one of the one of the things that some that, that some some leaders miss is that part of their job is to grow other leaders, right. is to grow those persons who are working right. with you right. and not leave them the same way you met them. Right. And I think a right. lot of leaders. So, for example, I, I think back years ago with me in, in a leadership position, sometimes you might have someone um, uh, do a letter for your response, whatever, whatever it may right, be. Right. No, I, I remember, I, I remember this day clearly. This person who did the and it, you know, came in, and I'm now going to sign it. 
I would not have said it that way. Mm -hmm. But in order to, to build, you know, to build the, the encouragement and the confidence, I allowed it to go. It wasn't, right. it wasn't something that wasn't going to cost the company, but I allowed it to go. So right. next time, right. just what you said there, I was able to discuss after the fact how we right. can do these letters. And, and, and that is a very simple example. Right. How we can help to grow them, yes. Of right. course. And, and, and growth, I believe in personal growth. Most of my writings mm -hmm. and everything I do Absolutely. is on personal growth. Maxine, as we wrap up, can you tell um, our audience where... They can find you if oh, they want absolutely. to connect with uh, you. Absolutely. As we said at the, at the start of this, um, uh, I coach leaders and I coach leaders at all levels. So don't, when, when you hear executive coach, don't let that make you feel it's only for, for the, you know, for the people in right, the C-suite. Right. It's I anybody coach. who is in need. Absolutely. Anybody Where can they, what's your website that they can, can find? You can reach it. me at softskillservices.com. And once you go to softskillservices.com, you'll find all the different ways to connect Perfect. with me. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. And I, I am an author and um, a coach as Maxine is too. And I do HR consulting as well. I can be found at ShellyCameron.com. Anything there that you see, and then you can reach out to me if you want to, um, whatever interests you have as well. So it has been a pleasure been chatting forward. with you, Maxine. And, um, and we look we... forward to helping you. Perfect. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, Maxine. Best. My pleasure.